Hi, welcome back to day two of Kick My Asana Challenge. My name is Melanie Dawn and I'll be your teacher and guide today. But as always, breath and your body are your ultimate guide, only going to the limit that you feel is possible for you today. So today we are starting on our backs in a shape called bound angle, Baddha Konasana. When you find this shape, it is flat on your back soles of your feet coming together to touch and the knees falling wide in a way. So if you were to look at your shape from the sky, the interior of your legs would look like a diamond. Your feet would be prayer. Arms will come alongside body Palms turned down is a gesture of grounding. I'm here. I am present. And shoulder blades hug tight to the spine and palms turned up as a heart opening, a gesture of receiving. So whatever you need today, whatever you're looking for, finding the perfect hand placement for you. A soft and gentle tuck of the chin towards the heart just slightly not pressing uh, down too hard on the throat cutting off any breath in any way and then we'll start by taking a deep breath in filling the whole belly and a big open mouth sigh out And if you'd like to have a little bit more opening across the shoulders, you can take your arms out shoulder height, turning palms up. Legs stay in the same position, eyes stay closed, really centering into your breath for the last four. Three. two and the last big breath here we won't change anything about the shape but drop the arms alongside body again so you can bring the hands face down press into the outside arches of your feet so the outside edges of your feet and you're going to lift your pelvis off the ground keeping your knees wide really uh, gripping down through glutes continuing to lift 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 while breath is still flowing breath is not held And then as you inhale, you can slowly drop the pelvis and tailbone down to the ground. You might notice that there is a sensation of, holy crap, that was hard. <laughs> That's totally okay. Totally fine. Now we'll press, uh, still keep the feet uh, lightly pressed down into the earth, the outside arches. But begin to lift the knees up at even speed, maybe about two inches or so. This activates the inside of the thigh. So the inside of the thigh is working pretty hard here to hold the knees up where they're not resting. Take a full breath in. And as you exhale, you can drop back down, let the knees become heavy widening the inside of the diamond shape between the legs. And then on the next exhale, you'll lift your knees slightly higher than you did the last time and hold position, not breath. Making sure that the shoulders stay soft, face stays soft. And the only thing that's actually actively working here is the lower part of the body and deep inner core. You may even start to experience some shaking here. That's completely normal. If it's too much, you'll just let your legs relax again. If you still have space and will to go deeper or higher, knees will come up slightly, both sides, and hold.
This could be a lot of shaking. Um, it's hard for the mental body to not be in control of the physical body. Uh, when the adductors start to tire, this is what happens. And it can be uh, something that we need to breathe through or move out of. You'll bring your knees about three inches apart so they come up quite high. And hold. Belly breaths are still flowing. Body may be acting in a way contrary to what we believe it should be. I'm becoming okay with that. Take a full sip of breath in. And then exhale, let your knees drop back into bound angle, Baddha Konasana. And you might notice that your bound angle got a little bit deeper. And maybe not physically deeper, but feels deeper somewhat in a sensory body. Maybe a little bit more easeful. Maybe your mind is still saying, what is going on here? And then you'll use the uh, palms of your hands to the outside edges of your thighs to support the knees coming up through center. And then heel toe your feet to the outside edges of your mat. So the outside arches in line with the long side of your mat and the knees will fall into center. And this is uh, very often a strong sensation after having the hips open for so long. And then we're doing an internal rotation still pondering breath into the belly into the whole body and then you can uh, start to just slightly shift the knees from side to side and this will begin a massaging of the low back And then eventually dropping the knees over to the left side. There'll be a nice wide stance for the feet. Knees fall to the left. And then bringing them back up through center. You will take left ankle across right thigh. Wrap the hands to the back of the right thigh. Flex both feet strong yang practice and then start to hug your shape towards your heart or towards shoulders maybe you don't get hugged in very uh, tight or far and that's okay maybe you actually didn't even get your right foot off the ground and that was enough for you and that's perfect today too You'll look for extra sensation if it's available by just shifting your shape slightly to the right. You'll feel it through the, or you, potentially you could feel it through the, the outside of the left thigh. Soft shoulders, again, lots of times the, the jaw area and shoulders uh, begin to tighten here. Really dip into ease. And then the shape will remain exactly as it is, a figure four shape. But you'll part your arms, drop them out shoulder height and drop your whole shape over to the right side of your body, a twisted figure four. This will look like your left foot touching the ground now, instead of floating in space. Left foot touches down to the ground, right heel hugs in towards the glute. There's option to go into a cattail bind here if you have it. This is a really nice posture to 
move into bigger chest breaths and belly breaths. Lots of opening across the upper chest, twisting through the torso. We'll come back through center. Bring your shape to center. Drop your right foot down. Unwind left ankle and drop both feet down into the earth. You'll heel toe the feet to the outside edges of your mat for internal rotation one more time. Hold for two breaths. And then begin movement once again, massaging low back, bringing knees from side to side until eventually the knees fall over to the right side of your mat. Strong core, strong pelvic floor. Knees come back through center. Right ankle crosses left thigh. Option to stay here if you have enough sensation here or looking for more interlacing the hands at the back of left thigh. Not forgetting that the feet stay active. I am strong. I am present. My shoulders are soft. There is steer and sukha in every posture. A little more pressure into the belly if you do have hands laced behind thigh. A little more obvious that the breath is flowing down into the belly as there's pressure met into thighs. And you will shift your shape just slightly to the left if you want more sensation. You really don't have to go far for it, at least if you're me, my body. Uh, just a slight little shift and you're there in sensation land. And then arms part out to a T. Whole shape drops over to the left. Right foot touches down. Left heel starts to kick towards the glutes. Option to bind cattail if you have it in your practice. And if you don't know what that is, it is your closest hand to closest foot <laughs> takes the bind. So both hands grab an ankle or a foot. Releasing the bind if you have it. Coming back through center, unwinding ankle from thigh, planting both feet down. Let's take the feet about hip width distance apart and hug the heels in nice and close to the glutes. Reach the fingers for the back of the ankles. Take a deep breath in here. As you exhale, you're gonna use the power of your exhale to lift your pelvis up. Keep your chin slightly tucked towards the throat and start to go into a bit of a back bend. So the pelvis is guiding you up towards the sky as the heels are pulling back and knees are pushing forward. There's a lot going on inside the bridge posture. Arms are long side body, palms are turned down, shoulder blades hug nice and tight to the spine. Taking full and complete breaths here for two. One, and then a soft, long release as you breathe in and drop hips and spine back down to your mat. And you'll want to extend your tailbone towards your heels here. Otherwise, you'll come in a bit of a spinal kink. So when the, the tailbone reaches for the heels, you make the spine nice and long. Use your next exhale to power through, lifting the hips up towards the sky. Exhale to lift. And inhale to drop back down, tail reaching for heels. Exhale, lifting. And inhales to lower. And you can follow your own breath. 
however fast you want your practice to move or slow. On your last empty, let the hips come down heavy. Hug the knees over top of the heart. Give yourself a nice tight squeeze as you very, very quietly or almost as though you can't see you moving, rock from side to side while pushing your tailbone down to the ground. Knees are hugged in. Very micro movements. Now we'll go into bigger movements. So the hands come to the backs of the thighs. If you have it in your practice to rock and roll from tail to the crown of your head and eventually roll over into a cat cow tabletop. Hands come underneath or I should say wrists come underneath the shoulders. Knees stack underneath the hips. Top side of the foot is down, rooting into the earth. With your in-breath, belly drops, sit bones widen, crown lifts. The heart is pressing through the upper arms here. As you exhale, chin tucks towards the heart. Crown drops down and everything squeezes into center. Following breath, inhales, belly drops. Exhales, spine rounds. Option to close your eyes for the last two breath and really tune into where your body feels rigid, where it feels fluid, soft, and flowing. And then you'll find stillness at center. Rooting into the palms of the hands, start to tuck the toes and then press up into your downward facing dog. Heart presses back towards thighs, tailbone lifts, rises as though it's lightweight and all the weight is into the knuckle mounds of the hands, soft bend through the knees. You can start to pedal your knees, your legs one at a time shaking the hips as much as you'd like and in this particular setting you at home you don't have to worry about your pants being see-through so i have these amazing costco tights that i just bought and they are so soft and uh, i know that they just would not hold up in a sunlit room so um, here i am doing this at home feeling 100 percent okay with self this is the great thing about a home practice. And then we'll start to play a little bit with the core and the strength of the legs. So same sort of downward facing dog position. All you're going to do is bend your knees so much so that they hover just off of your mat. And then use your breath out to press back into downward facing dog. Take another slow breath in. And exhale, bend the knees, hover away off of your mat. Back to downward facing dog, whatever breath feels comfortable in your body. And moving back and forth, hovering the knees, downward facing dog until you feel complete. Well, actually, until I probably tell you you're complete (laughs) if you want to stick along with the practice. And then find downward facing dog, still in downward facing dog. Take a slight gaze forward and walk your feet to the top of your mat. Keep your hands and head heavy, belly soft, forward fold, Uttanasana. With your inhale, a powerful lifting of the spine to a flat back. Hug the shoulder blades into the spine. That means the heart's pressing down towards the ground. Sometimes it's nice to bring the elbows along side body just so you can physically feel the shoulder blades roll onto the back. 
Beautiful. Take a breath in and empty to fold. Uttanasana. We'll do a few half sun salutations here. Breath in, rise up, hands sweep up overhead. And an exhale to fold. Halfway lift, breath in, strong flat back. Breathing out, forward fold. Breath in, press down through the feet, rise up through the crown of the head, take the arms overhead. And make a bind with the fingers so that the fingers interlace all but the index finger. It'll look like you have like a little uh, sort of gun pose or something similar to that or a temple. A temple mudra is what we would call it. Reach the fingers up towards the sky. Press down through the heels energetically. And side bend over to the right. So the fingers are going to trace over to the right side. Lots of length through left side body. Chin again softly tucked towards the throat. Inhales back through center. And exhale over to the other side. Breath traveling through right side body here. Inhaling back to center. And exhaling, part the palms, fold forward. Halfway lift. Forward fold. Stepping the left foot back. Coming up crescent lunge. Strong crescent lunge. Anchoring down into the right front foot, pressing into the ball of the back foot. So the left heel is pretty high here. And really lots of energy pressing through the left heel. Then the arms come up overhead, trying to hug the sternum close to the spine so that the sternum's not lifting into a back bend. We want to keep everything nice and strong, stacked over top of the hips. And we'll fill up with breath here. As you exhale, a slow lower of your back knee down. Maybe it touches your mat. Maybe it just hovers and then an inhale to come back up. Two more times, exhale to lower. Inhale to rise. Empty lower. Breathing in, come up nice and strong. Drop your back heel, open up warrior two. Arms part out, shoulder height, palms are facing down, front knee is tracking big toe, breath in, front palm flips, backhand drops, reversing your warrior. Try to stay heavy through the front knee, you don't want to come up into a triangle leg. Breath back through center, warrior two. And as you're empty and you're coming into a side bend, side angle, so squeezing into the right rib, drop your right elbow down to front thigh. Lift the left arm up towards the sky. So peeling open that left rib cage and rolling the right rib cage underneath. Option to stay here, this is just side angle, or to take your top fingers and reach them how do we do this when you're at home? <laughs> you're going to reach them in the direction of your crown of your head all the way over there, but you're not going to let your armpit drop in on your posture. And then even more fun, you have the option of taking your bottom hand straight as though you're like sideways holding a beach ball very weirdly. We'll call this beach ball side angle. You can look at me on uh, the video doing it. Beach ball side angle, breath in, come back up, warrior two. And exhale, reverse warrior. 
backhand drops down. Front fingers reach up. Come back, warrior two. You'll straighten through the front leg. Arms are still out at warrior two arms. So the right fingertips are gonna reach forward as your left hip presses back. From there, you'll just drop your front hand down and lift your back arm up. Trikonasana, triangle pose. Option to have a, a block here if you need it or a soup can or anything you have for height that you might need to use for support. Subtle, subtle bend through the knee just so that the muscles are engaged in supporting the joint. And then we'll come back up through center. Keep the legs straight, but turn your right toes towards the long edge of the mat. Hands will come to the hips. Big breath in growing tall and as you exhale you'll fold forward about halfway so that the crown of your head is reaching away from your hips and your heart is parallel with the floor on your next breath out you'll drop your hands down let the head fall and this is a wide-legged forward fold it's actually probably one of my favorite postures out of the whole asana series Love, love, love it. Uh, what makes it easier is when you leave the weight in your heels instead of moving it forward into the front of the foot, but not taking your heel away from the earth. So if you are back in the heels, see if you can shift the weight slightly forward and pick your tail up towards the sky while dropping your head down towards the ground. If you have a headstand in your practice and you want to go into that, you're more than welcome to go into that here. We're here for five breaths. Three more breaths. Two. And last one. This is going to be a little bit fun and a little bit tricky. So if you have to look at the screen, you can't just use my voice. Uh, I'll be showing you on the screen how to do this. We're just going to walk our hands to the back of the mat, framing the left foot now as you roll high onto the ball, the back foot. So your right foot is at the back of the mat. Your left foot is being framed by both hands. So you're in a, a runner's lunge crescent lunge strong belly start to stack shoulders over top of hips and then lastly lifting hands above head keeping heart in line uh, with the spine tucked nice and tight to the back body you might feel a lot of opening through the right hip flexor area Again, powering through that back foot. On your empty back knee starts to drop down towards your mat, maybe touching, maybe not. Inhales to rise. Two more, exhale lower. Inhale, lift. Empty sink. And inhale, coming back up, crescent lunge. Back heel drops down, arms reach out, shoulder height, warrior two. If you're getting tired and uh, posture's getting a little bit sloppy, just honing in on where is weak and can I find compassion, softness there. Front palm flips up, back hand drops down, reverse warrior, squeezing out breath as you go into the twist. Inhale to center. 
Exhale, finds left elbow, front thigh, back hand straight up, out of the shoulder socket, fingers reaching for the sky. And then option to stay here or start to thread your fingers towards the crown of the head, so overhead, bringing right uh, upper arm by right ear, fingers reaching. Bottom hand can come in here, palms facing each other, beach ball, side ankle. Holding and breathing. You don't have to go as deep and remember that your spine is here to support you. Lean into your back body. Use the inhale to come up warrior two. Uh, left leg then becomes straight, right hip presses back as left fingers move forward. Front hand drops down, back hand comes up, trikonasana, option for support. Muscles are engaged, slight bend through the knee, all the good stuff. Continually rolling left rib under right, right shoulder stacked over left. Inhale, come back up, legs stay straight, all 10 toes point towards the long side of the mat, hands find your hips, and sink deeply so the hips maybe even try to drop down about knee height, somewhere near there. Widen the elbows out, shoulder height, reach the fingers up so you're in a cactus shape. Inhale, legs straighten, arms reach up. Exhale, knees bend, hips drop, elbows come shoulder height. Inhale, reach up, legs straighten. Exhale, knees bend, elbows drop, shoulder height. Inhale, rise. Exhale, fall. Follow your own breath, two more breath. And then we'll come back when you're in your squat, hips level with the knees. Take a deep breath in, straighten the legs, hands find waist. Big toes turn in towards center as you exhale, fold forward. From your forward fold, you'll walk to the original top of your mat. So your hands will now frame your right foot. Low runner's lunge, but get ready. Power down through the right foot. Keep your hands on the ground if you need. Lift the back leg up, standing split. Start to bring your hands into heart center if this is available. And if it's not available, that's okay. You can stay in standing split. Modified warrior three, hands at heart center on Jolly Mudra. Baby heel or baby toe is looking down. So the left leg, the baby toe is looking down at your mat. Left hip anchoring down towards the earth. Option to extend the arms to a full warrior three. Last breath. And both feet will come to the top of the mat, forward fold. From here, left foot will stay where it is. Right foot takes a slight step back. Low runner's lunge. I lied about the slight step, so it'd be a pretty big step to get into a low runner's lunge. Hands can stay where they are. Back leg kicks up, standing split. At the same time, the standing split leg kicks up and becomes level with the hips. You're going to start to lift the heart, bring the hands into your heart center, and find your modified warrior three on Jolly Mudra. Stay here. Focusing on rooting through your grounded foot, kicking energy through the lifted heel and crown of the head, and option to extend the arms out in full warrior three. Uh, 
last breath. And both feet, uh, actually hands can touch down to the earth first. Both feet will step forward, forward fold. As you breathe in, you're going to make your way into your chair posture. So the hips will sink down and back as the hands rise up. Most people can't go beyond their shoulders without going into a rib flare or a back bend. So if your spine stays nice and strong and you don't go into a rib cage flare, then you can lift your hands up above the shoulders. But if the moment that rib cage flare starts to happen is where you want your arms reaching out. Sinking the hips back as the weight moves forward into the front of the foot. Ukatasana, chair pose. Still breathing, strong legs, strong body. Filling up, emptying out, fold forward. Palms press down, either jump back or step back plank. Nice, strong plank. Option for knees down. Three more breath. And then if you are... Uh, able to do chaturanga uh, you can go for it move through your chaturanga come up cobra or up dog those of you who have no clue what I'm saying uh, knees will drop down you'll take a breath in as you grow your crown so grow it towards the top of your mat and then an exhale tuck your elbows nice and close to your sides as you bring your chest down to your mat untuck the toes Lift the heart slightly, keep the chin tucked towards the throat, but lift the crown of the head up. Baby Cobra. Option to go into upward facing dog where you'd press strongly down into the palms of your hands, start to straighten through the elbows, lift the thighs away from your mat. Don't throw your head back as much as you want to. Beautiful. Baby cobra or upward facing dog. All right. Now we'll go downward facing dog, Adamuka. From downward facing dog, you will take your uh, feet slightly forward to the middle of the mat. Take a bend through the knees until you can crouch all the way down and roll onto your back body. Once you're on your back body, hug the knees in over top of the heart. Keep the right knee outside of right rib cage and wrap both hands around that shin bone. Drop your left foot down to your mat or extend your left leg straight, depending on how much space you have for your half wind removing posture. Don't squeeze the ever-living life out of your fingers. <laughs> Soften your shoulders, jaw, fingers. And take two more breaths. From here, you will, uh, if you'd like, move into a supine twist. So the left hand stays where it is. Right arm drops out shoulder height. You'll use that left hand to guide the knee across body. So you're coming into a nice twist all the way up the spine. Pretty good, good deep twist. You don't have to go knee to floor. I'm always hovering pretty high. If you can, that's cool. Next inhale will take you back to your center. Knees come over top of the heart. And a slow rock from side to side. Oh, side to side. Hands grip left shin, right foot either drops down to the mat or leg extends and straightens. One thing that can happen when that leg straightens, your right leg, is that it goes soft. We want to still be kicking through the heel, pulling back through the toes. So this is like an active leg that helps to level the pelvis. Stay deep in your posture. Last breath here. 
Left arm drops out, shoulder height, right palm guides, knee across body. Squeezing out breath as you move into your twist. Noticing how the inhale feels under pressure. And then coming back through center. You can take one last big squeeze of the knees over top of your heart if you feel called to do so. If you need to move into something like a happy baby, you're more than welcome to. Three breath before we close off into our Shavasana, but don't move there yet. I want to take us there with a buildup of tension. Before you make your way into your final resting pose, Take your knees over top of your heart. Squeeze the shin bones towards the heart at the same time as breathing in. So there's a lot of pressure into the belly. Then lift your forehead towards your knees and continue to pull breath in. Feet are active and flexed. As you exhale, you'll release the bind of the shins. Drop your whole body long, flat, so the legs reach out away from you. Arms come out about equal distance away from midline. And the breath starts to turn into a more organic breath. Quieter breath. You may want to take one more sip in. Hold it and sigh it out. That completes our practice for day two. Kick my asana. Namaste.